Let's see if we can find an example of these backslashes I'm talking about. If you right mouse click on Start and choose Explore, you can see that it brings me up to my Start menu. This is the default menu on my computer. And here's where we can see where some of these come into effect. On our address bar, you can see the folder that we happen to be in is on the C volume. I know that because it has a C colon. That's the volume that we have for this particular computer. And within the Documents and Settings folder, which has within it an XPM user folder, which has within it a Start Menu folder, I have separated each one of those with a backslash. So anytime you start to see the, the number with a colon, we know which volume, and we know what our different folders are because they're always going to be separated with that backslash. Let's say that we have created our hard drive, we've installed our operating system. Now we'd like to put some of our music onto our computer, but we just don't want to throw all the music into the music folder. We would like to separate out the music folder into subfolders and have within there different types of music. So one of the things we can do is either make, make new folders from our file manager. We can also create folders at the command line. Let's do both of those. We're back on our Windows XP machine, and you can see that I'm in my My Documents folder. I'm going to drill down, double click on My Music, and this is where I want to separate out the music types that I have. If I right mouse click and choose New Folder, it creates a new folder here, and it automatically highlights the name of that folder for me to type. So if I want to put into here classical music, I can type classical and hit Enter, and now I've created a new folder. And if you see next to My Music, if I click that plus sign, it shows me now that the classical folder is right there. Now let's say I wanted to create that at the command line. I can do that as well by going to my Start menu and clicking Run, and CMD starts a command line, just as we learned from our last video. Now if I use a DIR command, that gives me a directory of what's here. Maybe I'd like to change the directory and go into My Documents. And what I'm going to do is type the first few letters of that and then hit the Tab key and notice that it completes it off for me. And this takes me into the My Documents folder. If I do another directory, there's the My Music folder. And I'm going to CD. And if I hit, just hit Tab key, you'll notice it rotates through all the different options. I want to go to My Music and hit Enter. And now if I do a directory, notice that the classical directory is there and it has a DIR next to it, which is how I know that there's a classical directory. There's also a link in here to the sample music folder. That's a symbolic link. And that's why that doesn't show up as a directory, but it looks like a folder. If I look out here, it kind of looks like a folder, except notice it's got a little arrow there, which means that it is a symbolic link that goes off to another location. Now we were talking about creating a new folder. Let's say we have some country music. If I do an MKDIR, or I could also use MD, I can type the word country and hit Enter. And now, if I flip back here, you'll notice country ended up right here on that back folder. It just magically appeared in the background there. And if I do a directory here at my command line, you can see there's country. Well, maybe I've also got some rock music. Let's do an MD and rock. And if I type that in, notice rock magically appears also in my Explorer. So no matter where I change things, whether I'm at my command line or I'm in Windows Explorer, it's really changing underneath the surface these fundamental files and directories that I'm creating right there on that file system that I built whenever I installed the operating system. We chose some very simple names for our folders, but it's important to keep in mind you just can't use any name and any character to name your files and name your folders. Generally, the names of files have two parts, and the total of all of those can be 255 characters. Whenever you have a file name that is long like that, it's called a long file name, where you have uh, more than eight characters there for the file name and three for the extension, you can have this uh, really long name. So this uh, is all separated always by a period to separate the name of the file and the extension of the file. And these long file names, you can have a file name that really is, this is an almost impractically long file name dot HTML. That's a legitimate name of a file. Very often we are, are so accustomed to giving files such small names. Uh, Resume.doc. We say this is our agenda.doc. Well, we could really put a detailed file name in there that says resume, resume of James Messer. Dot doc, which gives us a lot more information. And if we're storing a lot of resumes, a lot of agendas, a lot of spreadsheets on our computer, 
make taking advantage of these long file names can be really useful for organizing and finding what we might need for later. If you're on a legacy operating system, you may see this if you're running older programs or if you're running in a DOS or older type of operating system that doesn't support these long file names. We use what we call 8.3 file names, which means your file name can be eight characters long and the extension can be three characters long. And that's it. You don't have a lot to play with there. So file name dot text, that's about as big as you can get. There are eight characters, a period, and three characters in the extension. You don't have to use all 8.3. It could be prof.m. And that's a completely legitimate 8.3 character file name. We're just not taking advantage of every possible file uh, letter that can be in that particular file name. Now the name itself, where we've been using letters up to this point, but you can use other characters as well. Depending on whether you're on Windows or Linux or the FAT operating system or not, there's, there's different characters that are supported and available. But there are some that you cannot use. You cannot use this pipe character. You can't use a backslash or a forward slash. We've already talked about how important it is to use those to designate where folders might be for the backslash. You can't use a question mark or an asterisk. So you have to keep in mind what characters are available to use and which are not. You can use apostrophes, things like professors space file dot text, completely legitimate. But you cannot use not a good document where the A is in these other brackets. And then you've got these double quotes around document. That's a problem right there. If you aren't quite sure which ones to use, you can always go into the operating system and try saving a file with some of those. You may find that the brackets work and the quotes don't. And that's the thing that's a little bit different depending on what operating system you're on. But it's important to keep in mind, you just can't use any particular character. There are certain characters that are reserved just for the operating system. And because of that, you can't use them in a file name. That extension that we are tacking on to the end of these files is pretty important. The name of that extension designates the type of file that it is. So if your extension is a .txt, this is probably a text file. And the reason that's important in Windows is that in Windows, there are applications on your computer that automatically recognize if the extension is txt. And if you just double click on stargate.txt, it will launch the program that's associated with text files. Similar thing if it's a MOV file, a movie file, and you double click that, it's going to launch your movie watch program, your, your media player program to be able to watch that movie. So continuum.mov, if I just double click on it, I don't have to start my Windows media player or my VLC player or whatever player I'm using. It will simply launch the default player that's in your environment and begin playing that movie. So you don't want to call continuum continuum.txt because it's now going to try to open that movie with a text editor. And that's not what you want to do either. So be very careful that you don't put the wrong extension on or that you don't change the extension of the files that's already there. One thing you'll notice in Windows is it by default hides the extension. You don't even get to see them, and therefore you don't get to change them unless you specifically tell Windows, yes, I would like to see those extensions now.